Tim, today we're talking about the treatment of open wounds and racehorses and, and thoroughbreds in general. When you're looking at a wound for the first time, how do you uh, assess what you're seeing in front of you? Well, Jane, it's very important to see you know, how long the wound's been there for a starter. It gives you a bit of a heads up as to you know, what other things could be going on behind the scenes. I think where it is on the horse's body is really, really important. And lower down the limb, there's some very, very important structures to be sure they're not uh, punctured or damaged. Um, for example, at the back of the fetlocks and uh, the, of front and back legs, around the hocks, there are a lot of very important structures, such as the tendon sheaths. If these get penetrated, you potentially have a serious problem of a tendon sheath infection. When you talk about time frames uh, with these open wounds, when do you think is the best time for a vet to be called out for these sort of things? Where there's some doubt as to whether there might be a joint penetration or a synovial structure such as a, as a tendon sheath, I think in those cases within 24 hours is very, very important and there's a really a big time frame, a window of opportunity that you can limit the damage with those if they're, if they're treated right. Once you do know what you're dealing with, what are the processes that, or steps that you take from there? Well, I think in all cases it's first principles. Um, I think many trainers understand that there's that golden time or that couple of hours after the, a wound has, has occurred that you can really lower contamination and it's basically cleaning that wound up. It's assessing, as I said before, where they are. But getting that initial treatment, first aid, is really important. And there's a number of things you've got to really think about and I think the primary thing on everyone's mind is, is a tetanus. Um, and there's two ways of protecting against tetanus. Any puncture wound around where a horse has been has got a high chance of picking up tetanus from the environment. So there's two ways of dealing with it. One is that the horses are previously vaccinated and I think that many of our better run farms ensure that and so they are already protected. Um, if there's any doubt then they need a tetanus antitoxin which is uh, antibodies in a, in a syringe, in an injection and they should be given within two to four days of that happening, uh, of the wound occurring to, to give maximum protection. If you have got it cleaned up and it's in an area that's not a high risk area, I think topical antibiotics are fine. You know, antiseptic creams, good clean bandaging is normally is fine. But if there is some doubt as to whether there might be some important structures damaged, well then antibiotics, broad spectrum antibiotics are really quite a help. You do speak about bandaging. How important is it, uh, once you've cleaned the wound out, to have have that protection over it with a bandage? Well, it's very important because in many of these environments are dusty or muddy or dirty. Um, so that's basically once you clean on the inside, we're stopping recontamination. That's very important. The other thing, as most people are aware, horses' limbs basically have, once they're swollen, very, very difficult to get you know, the swelling out of a horse's limb. It's basically skin and bone and a, a little bit of uh, very, very basic uh, tissue around it. So if you can limit the amount of swelling in that with a bandage first up, giving yourself a fighting chance of keeping a, a nice, great healing wound without a big fat leg for a long time. I think that, you know, horses' legs, once they're swollen, don't have the capacity to get rid of all that extra exudate around a wound site. Um, and it's really, really critical. If you can do that first aid and get that first pressure on it, you're giving yourself a much better chance of getting a good result. Yeah.